Good morning and uh, welcome here to Morning Prayer, this uh, fine morning, the 20th of July. Uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome you here. As you would have noticed, uh, things are slightly different today. Um, I've recorded this because uh, I needed to be somewhere else at nine o'clock or just after nine. So, um, so apologies for that, but it's a glorious morning at this present moment and I'm sure it is kind of the 40, well, half an hour or so um, later after I'm recording this. Of it can get confusing there. Uh, but it's a great pleasure to welcome you. I hope, you're far, I hope you're in good spirits and good health and I hope this finds you um, looking forward to this day with joyful hearts. Today is a day where we commemorate uh, and remember Bartomole de la Casas, Apostles, Apostle to the Indies from 1566. But um, the one we're going to read about today is Margaret of Antioch, who was a martyr from the 4th century, most appropriate for us in Stratton team ministry. In 303, stroke 304, the Emperor Diocletian began a persecution of Christians throughout the Roman Empire. The direct reason for the persecution is unknown, although there was an attempt to restore public morality and reinforce the imperial authority by ridding the empire of a creed and organisation which eroded its religious foundations. In the context of the 4th century society, Christianity was seen as morally and socially disruptive. In the spring of 304, an edict was published which required pagan sacrifice to be offered on pain of death and confiscation of property. Margaret is reputed to have been martyred at Antioch in the Diocletian persecution. Nothing certain is known of her life or the manner of her death, although many legends have grown up surrounding her. She is honoured from a very early date in the Eastern Church and then from the 7th century in the West. Many of the legends which surround Margaret first appeared in the 12th century. The most famous of these concerned being swallowed by a dragon and then bursting from its stomach. Somewhat perversely, she is the patron saint of childbirth. In the late Middle Ages, a cult surrounding her legend was popular, although it was suppressed by a papal decree at a later date. Although much of her life is clouded in mystery, many of the legends beyond belief Many, and many legends beyond belief, Margaret is a reminder of the sacrifice that Christians made in the early church and of the countless other unknown martyrs who have stood firm for Christ in the face of persecution and death. So Margaret has many legends that surround her and um, being swallowed by dragons and bursting forth. Um, but actually her sacrifice, her martyrdom, was almost something you could easily imagine. It was, she was just standing firm in her faith, which um, is quite remarkable. She was standing firm in her community and um, standing up for Christ. Certainly worth commemorating. Hopefully you have the liturgy in front of you. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. For as, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful to those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are but as grass. We flourish as a flower of the field. For as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord is from old, 
and endures forever on those who fear him and his righteousness on, chil on children's children, on those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments to do them. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to use uh, Psalm 126. Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we'll be like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with songs of joy. Then said they among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has indeed done great things for us and therefore we rejoiced. Restore again our fortunes, O Lord, as the river beds of the desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed, will come back with shouts of joy, bearing their sheaves with them. The Lord has indeed done great things for us. Lord, as you send rain and flowers, even to the wilderness, renew us by your spirit. Help us to sow good seed in time of adversity and to live to rejoice in your good harvest of all creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Samuel chapter 5. 1 Samuel chapter 5. When the Philistines captured the Ark of God, they brought it from Ebenezer to Ashod. Then the Philistine, Philistines took the Ark of God and brought it into the house of Dagon and placed it beside Dagon. When the people of Ashod, Ashdod rose early the next day, there was Dagon fallen on his face to the ground before the Ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and put him back in his place. But when they rose early on the next morning, Dagon had fallen on his face to the ground before the Ark of the Lord. The head of Dagon and both his hands were lying cut upon the threshold. Only the trunk of Dagon was left to him. This is why the priests of Dagon and all who enter the house of Dagon do not step on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod to this day. The hand of the Lord was heavy upon the people of Ashdod. And he terrified and struck them with tumours, both in Ashdod and in its territory. And when the inhabitants of Ashdod saw how things were, they said, The ark of the God of Israel must not remain with us, for his hand is heavy on us and our God Dagon. So they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, What shall we do with the ark of, of the God of Israel? The inhabitants of Gath replied, let the ark of God be moved onto us. So they moved the ark of God to, of Israel to Gath. But after they had brought it to Gath, the hand of the Lord was against the city, causing a great panic. He struck the inhabitants of the city, both young and old, so that tumours broke out on them. So they sent the ark of God of Israel to Ekron. But when the ark of God of Israel, excuse me, but when the ark of God came to Ekron. The people of Ekron cried out, Why have they brought across us to us the ark of the God of Israel to kill us and our people? They sent before they sent therefore and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel, and let it return to its own place, that it may not kill us and our people. For there was a deathly for there was a deathly panic throughout the whole city. The hand of God was heavy there. 
Those who did not die were stricken with tumours, and the cry of the city went up to heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have this song of deliverance. All the earth shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. Behold, behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. On that day you will say, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing God's praises who has triumphed gloriously. Let this be known in all the world. Shout and sing for joy, you that dwell in Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. All the earth shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. Great in your midst is the Holy One. Reading from Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 20, beginning to read at verse 41. Luke chapter 20, verse 41. Then he said to them, How can they say that the Messiah is David's son? For David himself says in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your, your, enemies your footstool. David thus calls him Lord. So how can be, he be his son? In the hearing of all the people, he said to the disciples, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honour at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He looked up and saw rich people putting their gifts into the treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins and he said, Truly, I tell you, the poor widow has put in more, more than all of them, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in all that she had to live on. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's a great reminder of the humility that we need to have and how um, ultimately we are like grass in the field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever and ever. Again, Jesus um, is speaking of people giving out of, um, of their poverty and giving all that they have. And a reminder for the likes of, or some of us that wander around with long cloaks. How we really, mean, that means nothing really. It is about that personal relationship with Jesus. And it is about coming before him with hum, a humble heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. From the Benedictus. You have set us free to worship you without fear, 
holy and righteous in your sight. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You have set us free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight. We now come to a time of prayer. So let us pray. Let us by prayer and intercession with thanksgiving, make our requests to our loving God who promises to listen to our prayers. Gracious God, we pray for peace, justice, righteousness and reconciliation throughout our world. We pray for healing throughout our world. Healing of body, minds and spirit. We pray for the honouring of human rights and for the relief of the oppressed. We give you thanks for all that is gracious in our lives and all that is gracious in the lives of children, women and men. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for the renewal of the church in faith, love and service. For the renewal of your church. We pray for Viv and Lee, our bishops. We pray for Alvin as she settles in to her new home. And we pray for her family as they get used to this new town. And we give you thanks, Lord, for her, for all that she has done for you, and for the visions that she that, that you are giving her for the future of our team and for the vision of your kingdom in our communities. And we pray for the life of our parishes and our communities. We give you thanks for the gift of your word and the light that it brings to our life. For the grace of the sacraments and for the fellowship of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local community for all people in their daily life and work. We pray for the young and the elderly, for families and all who are alone. We give you thanks for human skill and creativity and all that is abundantly good that reveals your loveliness and your wonder. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in need, for the sick, the sorrowful and the bereaved. 
We pray for all who bring care, comfort and healing. And just in a moment of quiet, you might like to lift before God those whom are on your hearts this day. We give you thanks for human love and friendship and for all that enriches our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let us commend ourselves and for all whom we pray. And this day, dear Father, we bring before you uh, Jack and Charlotte and Craig and Alice, who are, are celebrating their wed first wedding anniversary. And we pray, Lord, that their relationships and their marriages will be strong and healthy and lifelong and life-giving and life-affirming. And we pray that they will know the joy of your presence this day. So again, we commend ourselves and for all whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. And the collect for today. Merciful God. You have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we may, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Once again, thank you for joining me today, uh, um, albeit slightly different times. Um, I do hope you have a wonderful day. I hope that, I hope uh, you feel God's blessings in all things. Um, all things being well, we'll be back together tomorrow live at nine o'clock. Um, but in the meantime, may God bless you. So may the Lord be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Help us to be a blessing to each other and our communities, that your ways may be known among us. Let all the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Amen, 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 amen. Take care. Have a great day. God bless.